how far we've come. We, we knew there was censorship by Google and, and Facebook. Now it's all admitted. Now it's the front page of the newspapers. Drudge and others forced it out. Uh, this whole Trump campaign has forced a debate, shown the censorship, shown the manipulation. It's very, very exciting. Now, joining us uh, via video Skype uh, is the one, the only Roger Stone of StoneZone.com. And his best-selling book on the Clinton's war on women is, is really the handbook now, uh, really showing what monsters they are. But instead, they've got cover stories about Trump has asked women out on dates in between marriages. It's so horrible. Uh, but, but he's got more inside baseball in this new great pollster that he was recommending six months ago I get on, and I didn't. I want to get him on now. I, 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 it just fell through the cracks. And who's a libertarian, that's exciting. Uh, and other things that are happening and going on. Is, is Priebus finally being good? Is Priebus finally not trying to get a third party? Is he telling the truth? So all things 2016, all things Trump with Roger Stone. Roger, thank you so much, my friend. Alex, great to be back with you. Well, where should we start? Well, uh, let's start with the uh, Trump campaign's uh, new pollster, Tony Fabrizio. Uh, Tony Fabrizio is someone I have literally known since uh, my early 20s. He may be the most talented and gifted, but most importantly, the most combative uh, strategist and survey researcher in the Republican Party. The truth is, Tony Fabrizio is far more than a pollster. A pollster is just a guy who takes uh, samples of public opinion. Fabrizio has an uncanny ability to fashion that into a strategy. Uh, he's a very aggressive, in-your-face street fighter. Uh, he's perfect for the campaign to take down the Clintons. Uh, Donald Trump spoke to uh, Fabrizio three years ago when he was uh, briefly considering running for president then. This is a major, major coup for the Trump campaign. Now, Fabrizio was with uh, Rand Paul. Uh, his personal politics are very libertarian. Uh, he is He's exactly what the doc doctor ordered in terms of helping Donald Trump refine his, uh, his attack strategy on the Clintons and helping him define what the key issues are going to be that decide this election. Uh, it is, uh, it's a 10 strike, uh, getting him on board. I'm very excited about it. Well, I remember you six months ago telling me about Fabrizio and you know just how, how key he is to winning this thing. Run us through the waterfront. I mean, folks want to know all things Trump, how the campaign's going, what the next shooter drop is, what the enemy's up to, what Hillary's up to. Well, as you know, uh, and I'm sure you've heard it, Alex, I heard it a lot today. Uh, Donald Trump uh, was meeting today with Henry Kissinger. Uh, I read on Infowars.com the other day that he... Uh, met privately with James A. Baker III. Now, I knew he was meeting with Jim Baker, uh, but I didn't know that was a public matter. Uh, and there are some uh, in the Trump revolution who are scratching their heads and saying, well, wait a minute, is Trump uh, being co-opted by the establishment? Is he, uh, is he being taken over by the very people who have destroyed this country? And I must tell you, uh, I've known Trump for almost 40 years. His views on trade, his views on NATO, his, his uh, views on Wall Street have not changed in 30 years. He is his old man, and he's playing the establishment. He's playing them. So uh, in the wider population, Henry Kissinger uh, is viewed as a sage. Alex, you and I probably view him more as a war criminal. Absolutely. But, uh, but to the American people, he's some kind of an expert on foreign policy. Uh, believe me, uh, Donald Trump, uh, I'm sure, is seeing Henry Kissinger as a courtesy. I'm sure it'll be a polite meeting. But no one, no one is going to get Donald Trump to change his strongly held views on immigration, on trade, on war, on the, the war in Iraq, which he uh, recognized uh, early was a mistake. I had lunch today with a journalist from the New York Times. She affirms that she interviewed Trump before the beginning of the Iraq war, at the very beginning, and that he was unquestionably opposed to the war. Sure, he wrote that in his book at the time. Well, I mean, let me expand on this. I said the same thing you're saying yesterday. I hadn't talked to you about your views on it yet, but I mean, it's the same because it's true. He has to at least talk to people. He has to at least be friendly on the surface, or they will try to kill him. I mean, these are gangsters. And he met with Haas. 
And then Haas badmouthed him a week later because, and then Trump got more nationalistic. And so that's the reason they're so scared of him. But absolutely, it ended up being in, in a Houston news that he was meeting with Baker. So we ran the story, you know, because we're going to cover whatever Trump does. But I said on air, I don't think Trump's betraying us. It's his actions. I hope he meets with these people. Just like he says he'd meet with foreign dictators to try to get them to change their mind. That's how he wants to try to influence them. I mean, we ought to be glad this is happening. Well, and in fact, I don't think he wants to rush to war with the Chinese or the Russians. I think he would usher in an entire new era of negotiations, but hard-headed negotiations. Negotiations where the best interests of the United States... Sure. A president that wouldn't sell us out, a president would make good deals. But I, I just, uh, I, I want to reassure those people at the grassroots, uh, because you have, uh, you have his naming a fellow from... Uh, Goldman Sachs is his finance chairman. Remains to be seen whether that gentleman can raise the $1 billion that Donald Trump is going to need. Uh, you have him uh, meeting with Baker, uh, who is an expert uh, on, the, uh, on the institution. Somebody who was in that meeting told me that 80% of the discussion was Trump questioning Baker about how Ronald Reagan ran his administration, how he ran his presidency what Reagan's day was like. So uh, it, it sounds to me like Donald Trump benefited from that meeting. Uh, the Henry Kissinger thing I view as a touchstone, but anyone who thinks Kissinger could talk Trump out of his views doesn't understand. Absolutely, Donald. he's meeting with Kissinger so he can say, look, I talked to the supposed foreign policy wonk that the media worships. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. I don't think that there is uh, much value. Well, I mean, look, my audience gets it. They understand to, to beat Hillary, he's not going to have to compromise. He's not going to break eggs. He's going to follow the policies he said. That's why they're so scared of him. But he's going to have to raise money. He's going to have to get uh, his hands dirty a little bit because this is a dirty business, period. I mean, he, he says, I don't like the system of buying off politicians, but it's legal. It's what I have to do to do business. I want to change it. I don't like making my ties in Mexico or China. It's cost prohibitive. You can't do it here. He goes, okay, I'll, I got hats made in America. They're twice the price. Buy them. You know, I mean, I get it. I've been through it myself. I understand it. I tell people, we have shirts and hats made in America, and they're $30, and we have shirts and hats made in Mexico, and they're $15. So, you know, you make your choice, and people want the $15 ones. I mean, I get it. Well, and, and let's go a step further. It, it's CYA money. So uh, the, the Wall Street types, the K Street types, they are going to cover their derriere. I want a president who is smart enough not to turn that money down. Uh, it's like the question that I keep asking Trump, how much did you pay in taxes? And his answer is, as little as I possibly can. That's the guy I want watching. Yeah, I mean, I, I, mean, I, hope, I, I hope his IRS stuff comes out and he's really not trying to pay the IRS. That's what kind of thing I want to see. Well, I don't think he's broken any laws, but I... No, I, I know, but I mean, none of it goes around the country, as Reagan's commission found with Congress. It all goes to the debt. It keeps the economy in the toilet. The elites are offshore and don't pay tax. So, I, I mean, I, I, I mean, look, Warren Buffett tries to avoid tax but says raise them. Trump tries to avoid taxes and says cuts them. I love that. Well, yeah, I, when I... Day before yesterday, I had a delegation uh, from the Chinese government uh, contact me. They wanted to have lunch. Uh, I went to lunch with a bunch of diplomats. It was very pleasant. They wanted to know one thing and one thing only. Is Donald Trump really going to cut the corporate tax rate of the United States below that of China? They are petrified, Alex, that he's going to do this because they know exactly what will happen. The giant U.S. corporations doing business in China will all return to the United States to expand here, to hire here, to create jobs here. Uh, and uh, that is, uh, of course, not in the best interests of the Chinese. I like the idea of a president who puts the interests of the United States first. I think that's what the voters find most refreshing about Donald Trump. Well, that's incredible. So they are just horrified. But, but look, it's a level playing field. And he likes to make deals that are fair because he wants to have business back and forth. Uh, when you talk to Trump, I mean, I know he's put some specifics out. What would be fair just to lower it to the point maybe of China? And then to well, do things like make them raise their currency? We are currently at 35% as the corporate tax rate. China is at 25%. We could drop our rate to 20 or even better, 15, and you would suck all those companies out of China and back to the United States. That's right.
Now you have also, which is far more effective than uh, tariffs would be. Uh, you also have his program for inversion, bring back about $2 trillion that is sitting offshore untaxed to be taxed at a fair rate. Uh, and then Trump is the only presidential candidate who's recognized that there's almost a trillion dollars sitting in the federal checking accounts, which has never been swept, that is unbudgeted. So before you start cutting social programs, uh, let's go get that money. Trump has the most dynamic uh, and really the most pro-growth. That's right, and he won't shut down another thousand plants like Obama did, which will uh, try to keep us competitive on energy. I mean, he will literally, all he's doing is gonna take Count Dracula off our neck, just taking the vampire off we could get better, but we have to get Count Dracula off, and globalism is Count Dracula. Agreed. Now, you asked me uh, about obstacles for the campaign. I do want to warn uh, uh, your viewers and your listeners about this Great America PAC. Uh, this is run by Ed Rollins, who actually works for Teneo, which is, uh, he's a senior advisor there. Teneo is a Bill and Hillary Clinton-connected lobbying firm that paid Bill Clinton about $2 million a year. Rollins' uh, cohort in Great America PAC is a fellow named Jesse Benton. Oh, boy. He's a convicted felon, uh, convicted just last week of bribing people in Iowa to support uh, Ron Paul. He, he uh, drove Ron Paul and Rand Paul's campaigns into the toilet. Uh, he is devoid of any political uh, skill. Uh, this particular PAC, Great America PAC, has a $600,000 debt on the books, and... And that's the one I've seen in the news that's kind of acting like it represents Trump, and so... Yeah, I mean, Rollins, who's never been a Trump supporter, keeps now... Well, I mean, you even heard our guest in here where they're contacting him, acting like they represent Trump, to put him on Trump's advisory board, and Trump is actually in the news with his lawyers saying, don't give money to this group. Yeah, I mean, it, look, this is a scam, and, you're, and I'm sure if you're like me and you're on every pro-conservative and pro-liberty mailing list, you're getting inundated with these appeals. Don't fall for it. These folks said they were going to spend $1 million to help Trump. Uh, they wrote a million dollar check to a media buyer, but then the New York Times determined that they only spent $100,000 on ads in the primaries. So uh, this, is a, this is a fraud. Uh, and uh, the hard earned dollars of individual mom and pop donors sure, sure. I well, we know we have to also watch out for straw men with like, not this group, but other groups where they put out fake Trump supporters and then have them say outrageous stuff. I mean, that's, what type of dirty tricks do you expect next? Because you said the woman thing, the mafia thing, they've done all that now, uh, the fake lawsuits, what else is coming? Well, this New York Times piece, I think, is a watershed. Uh, and I give uh, great credit to the Trump campaign because they were able to roll out a number of the women who were quoted in the story, uh, but who were quoted out of context and in many cases, the Times uh, divine what these women were thinking. Oh, she felt degraded when Trump said, why don't you put on a bathing suit? Uh, these women didn't feel degraded at all. Uh, I think the mainstream media here, the New York Times particularly, has made a mistake, Alex, because they have now set a standard. If we're going to examine the conduct of, of Donald Trump towards women in the 70s... We've and got to look at Bill Clinton and the pedo plane. We got to look. We got to look at at, at Bubba uh, and his serial rapes, his assaults, uh, his exposing himself to women, uh, and then we come to the question of the credibility of his accusers. I believe every one of these women, Juanita Broderick, Kathleen Willey, Paula Jones, Christy Zercher, Sandra Allen, James, and many others, every one of them, is more credible than Hillary Clinton. Based on the public record, based on all the other lies Hillary has told, whether it is lying about being broke when you left the White House or lying about the uh, stealing the silver and the furniture in the China when they left the White House or lying about whether her grandparents were immigrants or lying about being named after Sir Edmund Hillary or lying about the reason that four brave Americans died in Benghazi. What about what about Brian Williams when she claimed that she was in... Uh the Balkans and got shot at and attacked all baloney. I mean, this woman is the definition of a liar. Yeah, no, the sniper fire. She was under sniper fire. She lies about who the real father of Chelsea Clinton is. Uh, she lies about cattle futures and how she made a killing with insider trader information. Uh, in all honesty, 
every one of these women who bears accusations against Bill Clinton will be found to be more credible well, sure. uh, than, than Hillary. Well they, so, well, they settled. They settled some of these rape cases. I mean, we've got them. Well, Paula Jones settled for $850,000. There is no admission of guilt by Bill Clinton, in all fairness. But uh, I can see what's coming, and it's very important that people understand it. Anyone who questions the Clinton's narrative of things is immediately branded as a conspiracy theorist. That's not a compliment when they say that. You're a kook. You're a nut. You believe everything that's in the National Enquirer. With all due respect, the National Enquirer is more accurate than the Washington Post. They broke the John Edwards Sure, story. but I mean, that doesn't work anymore when they call us conspiracy theorists. Have they figured that out yet? No, they really haven't. Uh, this is why Media Matters for America, the uh, George Soros-funded uh, Clinton apologist group, the rape enablers, or call them rape deniers, if you will, who try to whitewash anything done by Bill, Hillary, or Chelsea Clinton, they are every day just out there attacking the messenger. Uh, whether it's Alex Jones, whether it's Roger Stone, it's a constant vilification. Here's what they don't understand. I'm not running for president. You're not my running mate. This isn't about us. But let me go further and say this. They attack what they're most afraid of as if they have the moral high ground and a trick that they're labeling us as embarrassing is why they're targeting us. But if you look at what we've covered the last year, they're targeting and labeling what they're most afraid of and hoping that Trump doesn't start beating the drum on. And I know Trump's sophisticated enough to understand that. Well, uh, I understand that Donald Trump is on with Sean Hannity tonight. I think this is going to be a very, very important interview. Uh, and I hope folks will, uh, will tune in. Because this entire question of women and the and conduct towards women is now at the forefront. And the mainstream media would like to define this as indiscretions or affairs or adultery or cheating. But it's none of those things. It's about rape and sexual assault, and the abuse of men and women by the Sure, Clintons. sure. Are you predicting we're going to be hearing some of that tonight from Trump? Uh, I, I know nothing. I know that he is very hunkered down. Uh, he, he, he is offended by the New York Times story, as he should be. It's a hatchet job. And Trump is the greatest counterpuncher in American political history. So I will be anxious to tune in, and I know you will be also. All right. Well, Roger, thank you for popping in with us this week. I know you're a very busy man, stonezone.com. I look forward to speaking to you uh, anytime you've got new breaking news or next week. I know we're going to be talking to someone on the phone the next few days. You're coming to Austin soon. Thank you, sir.